Hey guys, it's Holly from Chic Antique. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are back with another furniture makeover. We're going to be working with green and gold today. Um, I've actually never done a green piece before, so I'm super excited to see how this one turns out. Just want to do a quick shout out as well to everyone who watched my last makeover. I really appreciate that. Um, so if you are excited for this makeover, uh, just keep on watching. So here's what we're going to be working on today. It is a solid wood dresser with mirror, um, and it's by Kincaid Furniture. It's in pretty good condition overall, but the top is a little bit worn down, so I'm going to show you how to fix that up. So I'm first going to start by removing the hardware to prepare it for cleaning. And I'll be cleaning the piece using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. And you always want to make sure you wear gloves while using this cleaner so that it doesn't absorb into your skin. And I'm just gonna be cleaning the whole piece with a microfiber rag. show it but I clean inside the drawers as well and then also inside the piece um, because there can be a lot of dust buildup, dirt, and you can even find interesting things inside the piece. So you just want to give the whole thing a good clean. And here's how that water looks after using the white lightning. And then after that I'm just going to be rinsing it off using clean clear water. And I'm going to be replacing the hardware with a handle. Um, so I'm just showing you my process of measuring and drilling the holes for that new hardware. Now I'll be using Bondo's all-purpose putty to fill the old hardware holes as well as any scratches or dents in the finish. And this is a two-part filler so you mix the gray filler portion with the cream hardener. Make sure to mix it really well um, and also quickly because it starts to set down uh, within a couple minutes. I'll just be filling in any scratches and the hardware holes as well. After that's all dry, I'm going to be sanding it using 180 grit sandpaper using my random orbital sander. And then this is the process, just um, sped up a lot. Um, just a couple tips for sanding. Um, you want to make sure that the sander is doing all the work. So you don't want to be pushing down really hard. That can be bad because it can make the surface uneven. And also you want to go very slowly. Wood filler does dry very, very hard, which is really nice, but it also can make it hard to sand down. So I'm just going over those areas just a little bit more. And 
now to smooth that out, I'm going to be using 220 grit sandpaper on a sandy block. And here's how it looks sped up. Just to smooth it out even further, I am using 320 grit sandpaper as well. And then just repeat that process on the rest of the piece, so starting with the drawers and then I'll do the body. So starting with 180 grit on the drawers. And then here I'm doing the drawer fronts with 180 grit as well. And if you're using um, any kind of sander, whether it's an electric sander or sanding by hand, always make sure you're wearing some sort of um, breathing protection, either some sort of mask or a respirator so that you're not breathing in um, those particles. And now I'm just wiping off the excess dust and then going over with 220 grit on the drawers. that off with the cloth as well and I always use tack cloth because I think it works a lot better than a wet rag or just a microfiber rag so I always use a tack cloth um, after wiping down initially with a rag and then just doing that same process on the rest of the piece time for paint so I'm gonna be using Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint in palmetto green um, a spray bottle and a zebra paintbrush this is my first time using a zebra brush and I did like it um, but you see a little bit later I switched to my Annie Sloan uh, natural hair brush I'm just kind of used to that one and I like how stiff the Annie Sloan one is so I switched to that one a little bit later. Although I do really like this brush because it is so wide, so it goes a little bit faster and it makes my lines really, really straight, which is great. see how excellent the coverage is with this paint. Um, one of the reasons why I love Dixie Belle, it has excellent coverage and it also self levels so you have minimal brush strokes when it dries. And as you can see, I like painting horizontally instead of going section by section, especially because I am trying to go for a very smooth modern look with this piece. So I am painting side to side instead of doing small sections at a time. Um, if you're looking to get more of a farmhouse or distressed um, texture look, um, you can paint in all directions. But if you want to get more of a smooth modern look, you can try painting horizontally like I am.
now I'm just painting the rest of the piece. So starting on the body and then I will go to the drawers next. like to paint these sections um, inside where the drawer goes. Um, it just gives a more professional look to your piece. to the drawers as well. I just wanted to show you something that popped up um, that I noticed when the paint dried. There are these dark marks that almost look like grease or oil. That could be from several things. Um, either somebody sort of stained the piece with the oil and obviously they cleaned it up but it soaked into the wood. Um, so it could be like an oil stain or it could also be some of the wood bleeding through. So I'm just gonna be sealing that up um, with a primer. This Boss Primer blocks odors, stains, and stops bleed through. So I'm just going to apply that in those areas. After that's dry, I'm going to be sanding in between my paint coats. Um, as I said, I'm going for a very modern, smooth finish. So I'm going to be sanding in between coats using 320 grit sandpaper. Um, and then on those spots where I primed, I am starting with 220 grit first. Um, and then going over the rest with 320 grit. 
If you're going for a smooth finish, I would recommend sanding it in between coats. It works really well to level everything out and make it very, very smooth. And then I'm wiping off the dust with a microfiber cloth. And then a tack cloth as always. And you might be kind of afraid to um, sand in between coats. As you can see here, it, it almost gives it like a streaky white look, but that is completely covered by the paint and it doesn't show up after you paint. So here is the second coat going on and it completely covers that. So you don't need to worry about the sanding changing your finish. I'm painting the body. I'm starting with a small synthetic brush just to get in these um, little crevices here on the top. And then I'm going back to my zebra brush to continue with that second coat. And then here's the second coat on the drawers as well. And then after that was dry, I sanded it with 320 grit as well and wiped that off. Um, and I'm actually going in with a third coat of paint just to get complete full coverage um, with this piece since the wood was so dark, um, I need three coats to completely cover it. And this is when I switched to the Annie Sloan um, natural bristle brush. Um, I'm just really accustomed to that brush. It's my favorite brush, so I'm just going back to that one. And then here's that third coat on the drawers as well after I had sanded. Now I'm 
gonna be sealing the piece using Dixie Belle's Gator Hide. It is their most protective top coat and I'm going to be using their blue sponge damp to apply that. It is their water resistant top coat and it's also their most durable. So I'm gonna be pouring that into a paper bowl. And then I'll dip the sponge in there and then wipe the excess off on the side. And the way I like to apply this um, is section by section. So I start in the middle of my section, go to the right, and then go from the middle of the section to the left and then smooth that out. You don't wanna overwork this because it's going to look more streaky and it won't level out as well. So you wanna just get it on there, smooth it out very quickly using maybe one or two strokes and then leave it alone. And if you don't like how something looks while it's drying, don't even try and go over it. Just let it be and you can always sand after it's dry. And my sponge was feeling a little bit dry, so I just dampened it just a little bit more. And here's the process sped up. You can see on the left side of the lip that there is a little bit of a drip there, so you always want to make sure that you are capping off the edges or grabbing that before it drips. That was my mistake. And now I'm going to be doing the same thing on the drawers. I apologize, my camera wasn't focused here, but you can still see the process. After that was dry, I just wanted to smooth it out a little bit, so I used 320 grit to sand it horizontally, and then I go over it vertically as well. And I really like Gator Hide, but it kind of has more of a high satin finish. Um, and I was looking for more of a matte look with this piece. I didn't really realize that until I put the gator hide on. I didn't really like how it looked. So after doing one coat of gator hide, I decided to use clear coat and flat on top of that to get the flat finish I was looking for. So I'm just applying that on the corners with a small synthetic brush. and then applying on the rest of the piece using the zebra brush. And I actually really liked how the zebra brush performed using top coat. So I think I will continue to use this um, as my brush to top coat in the future. And now that it's complete, just want to remind you what we started with.
here's how it looks now. So I hope you guys like this video. If you did, make sure to check out the video I have linked in the eye and down below, it is a Facebook thrift flip. And if you're curious of any of the products I use today, I will have those listed in the description as well. So I hope you guys will check out some of my other videos and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.